हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ माइंड मैप टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज वाटर रिसोर्सेज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट वाटर रिसोर्सेज इन इंडिया वाटर पॉल्यूशन वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट एंड रेन वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग बेनिफिट्स ऑफ रेन वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग एंड वाटर शेड मैनेजमेंट स्टेप्स टेकन बाय द गवर्नमेंट एंड वे फॉरवर्ड First of all let's have a look at a brief introduction of the topic water can be called the most precious resource in the world in summer water becomes a commodity as precious as gold in india according to a recent report by the government's policy think tank niti aayog a large number of indians face high to extreme water stress India's dependence on an increasingly erratic monsoon for its water requirements increases this challenge. Climate change is likely to exacerbate this pressure on water resources. The frequency and intensity on floods and droughts in the country is increasing, and the World Bank is engaged in different aspects of water resource management and the supply of drinking water across the country. Now let's discuss about water resources in India. India accounts for about 2.45% of the world's surface area. It has 4% of the world's water resources. It inhabit about 17% of the world's population. The total water available from precipitation in the country in a year is about 4000 cubic kilometer. Large part of it is lost through runoff, evaporation and transpiration. The average annual water availability of any region or country is largely dependent upon hydro meteorological and geological factors. However, water availability per person is dependent on population of the country. In India, the average annual per capita water availability in the years 2001 and 2011 was assessed as 1816 cubic meters and 1545 cubic meters respectively it has further reduced to 1486 cubic meters in the year 2021 annual per capita water availability of less than 1700 cubic meters is considered as water stressed condition annual per capita water availability below 1000 cubic meters is considered as a water scarcity condition the water availability in many regions of the country is below the national average and may be facing water stress or scarce conditions now let's discuss about water pollution the ground water is more depleted and less available Surface water is getting more and more polluted and unsuitable for human use. About 70% of surface water resources in India are polluted. The major contributing factor for water pollution are waste water from different sources. These sources include intensive agriculture, industries, infrastructure development, untreated urban runoff and waste water. According to WHO, half of India's morbidity is water related. Murthy and Kumar 2011 report Water quality data from Central Pollution Control Board or CPCB shows that organic and bacterial contamination are becoming increasingly critical Biological oxygen demand or BOD for most of the rivers of India are increasing and exceeding the standards Arsenic and fluoride contamination in groundwater is another challenge that India has to combat Parts of Assam, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh and West Bengal are suffering from contamination of arsenic in groundwater above permissible limit. Now let's understand about the watershed management and rainwater harvesting. Watershed is defined as any surface area from which runoff resulting from rainfall is collected and drained through a common point. A watershed may be only a few hectares as in small ponds or hundreds of square kilometers as in rivers watershed management basically refers to efficient management and conservation of surface and groundwater resources it involves prevention of runoff and storage and recharge of groundwater through various methods like percolation tanks recharge wells etc rainwater harvesting is a method to capture and store 
rain water for various uses. It is also used to recharge groundwater aquifers. It is a low cost and eco friendly technique for preserving every drop of water by guiding the rain water to bore well pits and wells. Rainwater harvesting has been practiced through various methods by different communities in the country for a long time. Traditional rainwater harvesting in rural areas is done by using surface storage bodies like lakes, ponds, irrigation tanks, etc. Few names of rainwater harvesting system in different regions are In Trans Himalayan region, it is called Zing system, Western Himalayas, Kul, Kul, or Khatri system. Eastern Himalayas, Apatani system, Northeastern Hill Ranges, Zabo system, Brahmaputra Valley, Dongs, Dungs, or Jampois system, Indo Gangetic Plains, Ahars, Pines, Dighis, and Baulis, the Thar Desert, Kunds, Quis or Berries, Jhalaras, Tobas, Tankas, Khandins, and Waf system, Western Ghats, Surangam system, and Eastern Coastal Plains. Eri or Urani system. Now let's discuss about the benefits of rainwater harvesting and watershed management. Increases water availability, checks the declining groundwater table, improves the quality of groundwater through dilution of contaminants, prevents soil erosion and flooding, arrests salt water intrusion in coastal areas if used to recharge aquifers and decreases community dependence on groundwater for domestic use. Now let's have a look at the steps taken by the government. Government of India launched Jal Shakti Abhiyan that is JSA in 2019. It is a time bound campaign with a mission mode approach intended to improve water availability including groundwater conditions. Atal Bhujal Yojana or ABHY was launched in 2019. It has the corpus of Rs 6,000 crore with World Bank funding. It aims for sustainable management of groundwater with community participation. The scheme is expected to contribute significantly towards water and food security of the participating states. Jal Jeevan Mission or JJM, a centrally sponsored scheme, is being implemented in partnership with states since August 2019. It target to provide portable tap water supply to every rural household of the country by 2024. Now lastly, let's discuss about the way forward. Water is a state subject. Steps for augmentation, conservation and efficient management of water resources are primarily undertaken by the respective state governments. Municipal wastewater treatment capacity developed so far in India accounts for only 29% waste generated in urban habitations. Many steps have been taken by the government like National Water Policy 2002, Jal Shakti Abhiyan 2015-18, Krishi Sichai Yojana etc. As the population is rising, it will increase the pressure on water. Some research and innovation must be done in the field like utilizing salt water. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, we will note down the prelims question that has been asked in 2014 exam. What are the benefits of implementing the Integrated Watershed Development Program? 1. Prevention of soil runoff. 2. Linking the country's perennial rivers with seasonal rivers. 3. Rainwater harvesting and recharge of groundwater table. 4. Regeneration of natural vegetation. Select the correct answer using the code given below. 1 and 2 only, 2, 3 and 4 only, 1, 3 and 4 only or 1, 2, 3 and 4. You can send the answer of this question in the comment section. Now moving on to the main question. This question has been asked in 2018 exam. The ideal solution of depleting groundwater resources in India is water harvesting system. How can it be made effective in urban areas? So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.